Hi, this is Jim Clary, and again, welcome to our YouTube video, AirMod Training. In this video, Sarah will first describe the input file, then we'll give you the opportunity to pause your computer while you get to your modeling example directory and get ready to execute it, and then you can follow her along as we go through the execution using that input file to generate an input file that will be used later on in the AirMod system. Just one quick reminder, you'll see that the explanation of the input file can get rather detailed. Uh, don't be too concerned about it at this point, because remember, uh, a real advantage of these videos is you can always go back to them for reference as you need to as you work through your actual projects. So I suggest that in this one, that you just follow along with Sarah. It'll give you a good, broad um, idea of what the input file looks like. But uh, don't be too concerned about sweating all the details at this point. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Sarah. I'm Sarah with AirModTraining.com. I'm going to show you how to set up and run BPIP Prime in this video. BPIP Prime is short for Building Profile Input Program to Prime. BPIP Prime generates the building parameters that AirMod uses to determine the effects of building downwash for each stack. Downwash occurs when aerodynamic wakes and eddies produced by nearby buildings affect stack emissions. You can see in the figure that as the flow moves around the building, the plume from the stack is entrained into the wakes and eddies from the building. Typically, downwash results in elevated concentrations in areas close to the emission source. Increasing the stack height minimizes the downwash effect. And in this figure, you can see the stack is taller and the plume is no longer entrained into the wake of the building. The formula good engineering practice, or formula GEP stack height, is the minimum height at which the stack escapes most of the downwash effects. The formula GEP stack height is defined as the height of the structure plus 1.5 times the lesser dimension of the structure. In our example, the height of the building closest to the stacks is 20 meters and the width is 200 meters. So the formula GEP stack height is 20 plus 1.5 times 20, which equals 50. And the stacks are actually 35 meters tall, so they are subject to building downwash. You can see the BPIP Prime input file on the right, and on the left, I've loaded the facility information into Google Earth so we can reference it as we go through the input file. So the first line of the input file is the title, and the second line is the process. This is a one to two character flag, and P specifies that the output values will be input into the Prime algorithm within the AirMod dispersion model. The third line is where you specify the input units, and then you follow it by the conversion factor needed to convert the listed units to meters. The fourth line specifies the type of grid you are using. In most cases, you will list UTMY, which specifies that you want to use a UTM coordinate system. And the second variable listed here is the direction of plant north. The fifth line specifies how many buildings you are going to process. In our example, we have three buildings. The first building we're going to define is the building that is closest to the stacks. This building has two tiers and each tier has four corners. For each building, the first line is going to contain the building name, then you list the number of tiers the building has, and then you list the base elevation, and you can list the actual base elevation here, but we set this value to zero because we are going to assume all buildings and stacks have the same base elevation. The next line will contain the number of corner points for the first tier, and then this is followed by the building height. So our first tier here has a building height of 12 meters. So in the next lines, you define the corner points in UTM coordinates. So we are listing the corner points of this lower tier here. So next we follow it by the second tier. Again, list the number of corner points followed by the building height. So in this case, our second tier here has a height of 20 meters. And then it's followed by the UTM coordinates 
that make up the corners of the second tier. So in our case, it will be these four coordinates here. That completes building one. Next, we will define building two. This is the building on the east side of the facility. And this building has only one tier. So going back to the input file, this is called build two. It has one tier and the base elevation is set to zero. This is an L-shaped building, so there are six corner points, and this building has a height of 10 meters. So then next you list the corner points of the building, which are these here. And that completes building two. Next we're going to define the circular fuel storage tank. We simply name this one tank, and it only has one tier, and the base elevation is set to zero. For this example, we determine the edge of the tank every 10 degrees, so we need to input 36 corner points. And the tank has a height of 18 meters. So we follow that by the 36 corner points, and you can see each one kind of with the line shown in the figure here. After you're finished entering the information about the buildings, the next line contains the number of stacks you want to evaluate. In our example, there are two stacks. For each stack, first list the stack name, then list the base elevation, which we set to zero here, and then you follow it by the stack height, which is 35 meters, and then you list the UTM coordinates of each stack. And that is the end of the input file. Thank you, Sarah, for that excellent explanation of the input files. We're now ready to, for you to actually run the program that will generate an output file that will be used later on as we move through the AirMod modeling system. So put this on pause until you're ready, you've got your computer ready, you've got your modeling um, directory open, and you're ready to follow Sarah along as she walks you through the program execution. To run BPIP Prime, we need to go to the BPIP Prime folder. So in a minute, I'll show you what running the batch file will do, but first I will take you step by step through the commands to run the program. So open a command prompt. You need to type the path to the executable as well as the executable name. And then you need to type the input file and then we need an output file. This will have the same file name, but we'll have the dot out extension. And then we need a summary file. So again, same file name, but it will have the dot sum extension. You can see BPIP Prime processed the wind flow for each 10 degree segment. And you can see our summary and output file in File Explorer here. So I'm going to open the output file, and we have a summary at the top, and then it goes down and summarizes the GEP stack height results. It lists your stack name with the stack height we defined in the input file and any differences in base elevations. Then it gives the formula GEP height. And the 50 meters is consistent with what we calculated earlier. As you scroll down, you will see the BPIP output information. BPIP Prime is the only program that does not generate a file that can be directly input into AirMod. So we will need to modify this a little bit. But first, we're going to use the command prompt to copy the output file. So we need to copy the output file to another file that can be input into AirMod. So it will have the same file name with the .so extension. I will close that command prompt. And this is the point I'm going to run the batch file. When you run the batch file, it will generate the same files here. The command to copy the out file to the SO file is within the batch file. So I'm going to delete the three files we generated, and I will show you that they will be created when we run the batch file. So open another command prompt. All you need to do is type run 
bpipprime.bat and then enter. So it goes through the processes and you can see we have the three files here. So now we need to edit the .so file. So that means we need to just delete the information at the top. And AirMod requires that the pathway ID is in the first two characters. So you can delete the leading spaces line by line. But I like to go to Edit, Replace, and copy everything from SO over to the left and put that in Find What and we want to replace that with capital SO only and then hit Replace All. And don't forget to save your file. So this output file contains the five building parameters that are required by AirMod to determine the downwash effects. So we have building height, building width, building length, XB ADJ, and then YB ADJ. The parameters are calculated for 36 wind flow vectors. The first value for each parameter starts with a wind flow towards 10 degrees, and the values are reported every 10 degrees going clockwise. It is important to note that the wind flow vector for calculations in BPIP prime are based on the direction towards which the wind is blowing, while traditional wind directions are determined by the direction from which the wind is blowing. I'm going to show you what the five building parameters are using Google Earth. For this demonstration, we're going to focus on building one and stack two. We're going to assume the wind flow is towards 70 degrees. With this flow, the stack is not affected by the second tier of the building, so we can exclude the second tier from our demonstration. BPIP Prime determines the projected building size depending on the direction of the flow. For this situation, the projected building is shown in green. BPIP Prime will use this building to calculate the building parameters. The building width parameter is the projected width of the building that is perpendicular to the flow. The building length parameter is the projected length of the building along the flow. The building height parameter is the maximum tier height. To determine the last two parameters, we need to determine the center point of the projected building width on the windward side. This is marked by the black dot, and the black line shown here is parallel to the wind flow. The XBADJ parameter is the along flow distance from the stack to the center of the upwind face of the projected building and the YBADJ parameter is the across flow distance from the stack to the center of the upwind face of the projected building. Now that you're familiar with the five building parameters, we're ready to input the building parameters into AirMod. If you run into a problem with any part of your AirMod modeling project, we offer online AirMod training help that you can purchase from airmodtraining.com. During our session, you'll be able to ask us any question related to your AirMod modeling project. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, AirMod Training, so you'll be notified when we upload any new videos. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.